Good morning, Business 493 Personal Money Management students. My name is Professor Hasse, Rick Hasse, and I'm speaking to you live and in color from my office in Claremont, California. And this class, this summer term, is a directed study class, meaning that you, do, you are on your own. I will provide uh, lectures on video, uh, I will be available for any questions or concerns you have during the course of our, our, of our summer term, but this is a directed study, which means that uh, I will not uh, have any uh, official class sessions. Everything is voluntary. It's up to you to complete this two credit hour uh, coursework for the summer. But I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Every, uh, every Saturday or every other Saturday of our course period, I will have a, a lecture. I will go over the material. Uh, I have provided and already sent you uh, a course syllabus and have made the Blackboard available. So uh, this morning, uh, Saturday, June 12th, I, I plan on just uh, introducing the course, talking about our first uh, week topic, which is personal banking, and then uh, leading to an assignment that you have to do in this next week right off the bat and, uh, and going over that. So again, uh, I am available at any time. Uh, you can email me, you can text me, you can go to our discussion forum and ask questions. Uh, but uh, this uh, class is designed to have you com complete uh, uh, some credit hours uh, on towards your uh, uh, business to, uh, into your undergraduate degree. And I know, uh, Elizabeth, you're in this class and you are a psychology major. And Stella, you're in this class and you're a child development major. So. Uh, your experience uh, in business is probably maybe a little bit limited, but at the same time, um, you're taking this course to uh, learn a little bit about personal finance and anything I can do to make that easier this summer, uh, please feel free. Every We will meet on five Saturdays uh, digitally, and you're more than welcome to come. Uh, the link is in Blackboard and is, has been made available to you. But you are, uh, we'll be meeting five Saturdays. We'll I'll take some time to go over the material and, and preview the work. Every class will have an agenda. And here's our agenda for this Saturday. We're introducing the course, talking about our syllabus and Blackboard, and then introducing the first two chapters. But one of the good things about this directed study is all the materials is lo are located in Blackboard. We do have a text and you're more than welcome to purchase it, but you do not have to purchase it if you don't want to. I provide all the necessary materials. You'll need to do a little research on your own for the assignments, but that's part of the study uh, and uh, make all the information available on Blackboard. Here's our course syllabus, which is provided for you in Blackboard, and I've already emailed it to you, and I hope you've had a chance to look it over. It just goes over the key parts of our class. Uh, notice we'll be meeting on these five Saturdays digitally, and um, here is a link to those office hour, uh, to that, those Zoom link hours if you care to join me on Saturday morning. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, a personal money management playlist which has important videos and videos that'll help you in your studies for this class. Uh, this class is designed to provide students with an understanding of personal finance. This course is designed to help students gain useful financial information and discover strategies for developing a comprehensive plan for managing their personal finances. I don't care if you're a biology major, a kinesiology major, an economics major, a uh, chemistry major. At some, at, during the point of your life, your business life, your career, your personal life, you need to know these things discussed in our course, personal money management, how to, how to handle and use bank accounts, how to handle and manage debt, how to handle and manage taxation, how to plan for retirement, how to do personal budgeting. These are all things that no matter what type of major you are, you will need these to manage your personal affairs during the course of your life. And that's what this course is designed to. We have uh, learning objectives, here they are. 
uh, what I just said. We have tech, a textbook, which is the Wall Street Journal Complete Guide to Personal Finance. It only costs about 10 bucks, but again, you do not have to have, have it if you don't want to. I provide all the material here in our Blackboard. We will do, this is a directed study class, so all the work is done on your own time. Uh, there'll be a variety of different assignments and, and uh, a paper that you'll have to do, but all these are designed to help in your learning of personal finance. Here's our grades. We'll have 20% uh, on class particip participation, which is basically uh, your uh, stock portfolio, which you'll be doing throughout our class. What, a stock portfolio? Yes, that's part of personal finance, how to invest. And we'll be uh, starting that this week and I'll go over that this morning as well. You have three assignments. One assignment is due next Saturday and it's posted to Blackboard. Each assignment is worth 20%. And then you have a case paper, which I'll assign and ask you to do. We'll discuss that in our next class on June 26th. <clears throat> so you have a case paper and that is due the last Saturday of our term. There's no graded homework. We might do and review some problems in our reading, but there's no graded homework. The grades are in three areas, class participation, assignments, and your paper. And just the rest of it is uh, paid political announcements from the University of Laverne, which I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with. Here's our course schedule, which I probably is very important to you. Uh, as you can see, if it's in yellow, it's for graded work. And uh, notice our first assignment is due at midnight on June 19th. All our work are due on Saturdays at midnight. All right. So you have all day of Saturday to finish it up and post it to Blackboard. As you can see there, three assignments, a case paper. Those are your work throughout our class. So that's our syllabus. Please take some time to look at it and review it. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Here's our Blackboard site. Uh, this is a site where basically you'll be doing all your learning. Again, it comes up with all the fundamentals. There's our class dates, our class hours. You know, usually I'm not gonna go to 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. It's usually about an hour, hour and a half because all the material is directed study and it's in this Blackboard. There's the link to uh, office Zoom hours for you on Saturday mornings and at any time during the course of the week, you click on this link, let me know that you're on and I'll be happy to meet with you at your convenience during the course of this summer. Here's a, a key part of our uh, course, the report card. After every graded assessment, I will post your grade. You'll see your cumulative average right here in the report card section. Whenever I send you an email, it's in the course announcements section. In case you make sure you check your email during the summer, that's how I get in contact with you. Here's the course announcements here in the file folder on the left-hand side of Blackboard. And as you can see, there's all the, uh, there's my welcome uh, email that I sent you a, a few days ago. First of all, I want to apologize. I was looking over this email and I found a typo. Where is that? Let me see if I can see if I can find that. Oh, I don't see it. I must have I must have fixed it. I did a uh, I did a, a kind of a funny uh, typo, but I guess that's not, uh, that's finished. I think it was on the version I sent you and I fixed it in this version. So I apologize for that. So here is our course a syllabus section. Again, again, if you click on this, it's a quick way of seeing our calendar and our events right there very quickly. You can click on that in our course syllabus section in Blackboard. Here's our, again, our syllabuses in two formats, a PDF and a Word doc. Here's some uh, information about our office hours and how to get a hold of me. And here's a quick bio and there's my ugly mug of uh, this uh, summer term. Here's the, again, Zoom and YouTube links. I will post all our class lectures. This link, once it's completed, will be posted to this Zoom links file folder so you can view it uh, at your convenience. It also will be in our YouTube playlist. If you have any questions or concerns, you can post it right here 
in our in, in posted here, and I will answer those questions if you have any. If you have assignments, and here is our first assignment due next Saturday, you can download this. I give it to you in two formats, a PDF and a Word doc format. Part of this assignment is to submit two files, post two files to Blackboard, one file with answering the questions in these assignments, and another to develop a portfolio spreadsheet. I will post a sample of that spreadsheet to this file folder at the close of my lecture today. And then I have every week outlined, as you can see, every week is already set up for our class and the topics and the information available. I will add to this as we move forward, but here's our class for today. There's our agenda again. Here are some review notes. Here is some information about banking and borrowing. This is taken right out of the, the text that I give you, gave you. Some information about banking, some information about credit lines and preparing a budget, and your credit score. One of the most important things in personal finance is your FICO score. And here's a little bit of information about that. Everybody needs to know about their credit rating because you can't borrow any money without it. So this is all information provided to you in your uh, Blackboard week to week. Here's the next time we meet on June, meet on June 26. We're going to be talking about budgeting. And here's some information about doing your own personal budgeting with some videos and some information. So we'll go over these in our Saturday lectures. But if you can look at them and get an idea what they're about, it'll help you in your directed study. Key points this week is about personal banking. You know, you can't do anything unless you have money. And how you manage that money, how you keep track of that money is very important. I'm sure a lot of you are, as you complete your degrees here at the University of Laverne, you'll be looking for employment, or you'll be going on maybe to graduate study. That requires money. And it requires you to understand and manage that money personally. What do we do with money? What is the cost of money? You know, one of the things about money is it's a pain in the neck, as you all know, but at the same time, it's a tool. It's a tool to manage your life, manage your family. It's a tool to become uh, more, uh, more qualified in your career. It's a tool to grow. It's a tool to acquire and seek happiness in your life. But money's not everything. But to be able to manage it safely, manage it correctly, relieves a lot of stress and burden in your life. And that's what this purpose of this class is. Do you have a plan for your money? Do you just get a paycheck, deposit it, spend it, and that's the end of it? Or do you take a paycheck and you deposit it and spend it, but also do you plan? Do you save money? Do you put money aside for a car, for education, for clothing, whatever, for a vacation? How do you handle money? And money can be a very simple tool to manage, but it also can be very stressful. And that's one of the things that you need to do is communicate. Communicate to yourself, communicate to your friends and family, communicate to the people who manage your money, your banker, understand them. Just, just don't go online all the time and kind of know what's going on and get to know and understand your money. One of the ways of understanding banking is make sure you understand your bank accounts. There's a question in the assignment this week about, give me an example of a bank account. There's checking accounts, there's savings accounts, there are credit unions, there's savings and loans institutions, there's commercial banking. There's all different kinds. Even credit card companies now have bank accounts. Capital One, Schwab, they all have bank accounts. So one of the things that you really need to be aware of is, Many of you probably already do bank, but get to know what services your bank offers. And more importantly, what does it cost to manage your money? A lot of times banks charge us fees and services and we really don't know what they're for. Make sure you understand. And also banking is a intermediary of where you invest money. It use, it's used as a tool to guide and distribute your money to various investments to earn income over time. 
many of you have to start thinking about um, investing for getting uh, things down the road that you would like. As I said earlier, cars, a house, clothing, family, education, whatever. And you need to start putting money aside in a savings account, in a certificate of deposit, in an IRA, in a 401k, a 403b. It's enough to make your head spin. But these are vehicles to put money aside and have it grow over time. That's important to get to know these things. And also at the same time, money, bank accounts, establish credit. Establish credit in the market. Your FICO score. Establishment of your reliability and risk in the market to acquire money like a credit card, like a student loan, like a car loan, a mortgage, anything you would need credit. And having a bank account establishes that credit. It shows the market that you're trustworthy, that you can manage money. And that's an important thing to remember, what to do with your money and also today, but what to do with your money in the future. That's very important. And that's the subject of our week number one, is understand what type of ways of managing money. It's very important. Here's a video that I'd like you to watch. It explains banking, kind of summarizes this first week of our personal money management class. It's also located in our YouTube playlist, but let's watch this video. Today, the banking industry is considered as the backbone of the economy and has a major contribution to its growth. It's also the main driver for currency and financial stability. But how did the story of banking start? The term bank is derived from the old Italian word, banca, meaning a bench. It referred to the public benches where money changers used to sit for exchanging coins or bills in the marketplace. But it's the goldsmiths of 17th century London who developed banking in its modern form. The goldsmith who used to store wealthy clients' gold in their private vaults soon began to lend this gold to others in exchange of a promissory note and the payment of an interest charge. That was the beginning of banking as we know it today. So what is the general role of a bank? Depositors, or people with money surplus, place their money at the bank in order to earn a return through the credit interest. Borrowers, or people with a shortage of money on the other hand, are willing to pay interest on the money the bank is lending them in order to accomplish an objective they're seeking. And how do banks make profit? A bank's primary source of revenue comes from the difference between the interest it's paying to depositors and the one it's earning from borrowers. A bank also makes profit from charging fees or commissions for services granted by the bank to its customers and from investments. So why are banks regulated? Banks collect funds from depositors in the form of small sized deposits and repackage them into larger sized loans. Borrowers, on the other hand, might not be able to repay the money they borrowed from the bank. In addition to that, banks sometimes invest deposits in risky assets. All of these reasons explain the major role of central banks in protecting depositors' money by monitoring the adequate level of riskiness the bank is taking. What is the role of central banks? Central banks oversee monetary policy to implement specific goals, such as currency stability, low inflation, and full employment. They determine the interest rates that influence the bank's pricing schemes and the economy's money supply. They issue currency and grant authorization to establish banks. Central banks also impose a threshold for capital requirements and place reserve requirements to ensure liquidity in crisis mode. They shape lending policies through margin requirements and other tools, and they act as a lender of last resort to finance banks that need liquidity. Today, several types of banks exist to answer the different needs of consumers and to give them a choice in the way they manage their money. A retail bank, for example, provides services to individuals. Commercial and corporate banks serve small to mid-sized businesses and large enterprises. Investment banks specialize in large and complex financial transactions. 
Private banks offer a personalized financial and banking service to high net worth individuals. So, what do we know today about the future of banking? Direct channels such as mobile and the internet are becoming increasingly important in retail banking as they are in our everyday's life. Customers today expect financial firms to listen, respond, and offer services through social media. Customers across all segments expect highly personalized, convenient, and reliable service, along with 24-7 accessibility. Banking is no longer somewhere you go, but something you do. Wait, before you scroll away, you need to hear. So that's a good definition of the history of banking and how it gets going. And there's some other videos in our playlist that might be able to help you. But I'm sure most of you kind of have a pretty good idea about banking and what to do with it. But what you probably don't have a good idea about is what do you do with the money? You know, you plan and you budget. And those are topics for other weeks. But this week, we're going to start an exercise that we're going to track throughout our course where you're going to be doing some investing. You're going to be picking some stocks to invest in. Here's my portfolio for this class this summer. I'm giving you an imaginary, and I stress the word imaginary, $100,000. And I'd like you to invest that. Wait a minute, Mr. Hassey, I never invested anything in my life. Well, that's okay. It's a good time to start. And you're going to pick up to five stocks. I picked four. You can pick only one. And you're going to invest it and keep track of it during the course of our summer term. And you're going to price your portfolio as of this past Friday, June 11th. So you're going to go to the internet, go to Yahoo Finance or go to any internet sources and find the closing stock price of your company that you've selected. For, so as you can see, for example, I picked four stocks, Apple, Bristol Myers, Merck and Walt Disney. All right. Why I pick these? Well, I'm interested in these companies. I'm a, I'm a big user of Apple products. Bristol Myers is a, uh, is a uh, consumer uh, company, consumer products and drugs. Merck is a health management company. And Disney, well, we all know about Disney. So I'm doing this portfolio. So if I wanted to find the price of my stock on this past Friday, here's what I would do. I would go to my browser, whatever that browser would be, and type in a search for a, an, a, a file or a, a website called Yahoo Finance. I have found Yahoo Finance to be the most easiest and user-friendly of all stock watchers on the internet. So you type in Yahoo Finance, and you click on Yahoo Finance, and there's the opening screen. It tells you a little bit about what's going on in the world. It gives you the markets and that sort of thing. So what we want to do is we want to find the companies that we selected. So I selected Apple. So I type in Apple in the search box and up immediately comes Apple Incorporated with its ticker symbol. The ticker symbol means that's what it's look, that's how it's shown in the stock markets. So I click on Apple and today is Saturday, Saturday. So this is the close of Apple stock yesterday, Friday, 127.35. $127.35. That was the last trade done in the market yesterday of Apple. So the market closes at one o'clock Pacific time, Monday through Friday. And that was the last close. So that's my closings price. Now, if some, for some reason you do this next week and the market is back in operations again on Monday and Tuesday, you can always go in and find the closing price on Friday the 11th by going to historical data clicking on that file or that link, and it goes immediately and gives you a list of the closing prices on any day you're looking and we're concerned about June 11th. And there it is right there, $127.35. So that's how you look up your stock price. You type it into the search window, find the company and find the price for June 11th. And that's how you begin your portfolio. Then once you do that, You go into your spreadsheet. Now this, this example that I have given you 
is a PDF because I want to see you create the spreadsheet on a spreadsheet, Excel, Mac Numbers, Google Sheets, however you want to do it. I know a lot of you maybe not have much experience with spreadsheets, but this is a good time to start. Spreadsheets are a good tool, not only, not in business, not only for business, but in anything to manage money and to take care of your affairs. So you go to, and I want your spreadsheet to look like this, set up like this. The company, the ticker symbol, it's traded on the exchange. What exchange is it traded on? June 11th. And under uh, Apple, I will type in these prices for that day. Okay, that's how it works. Then you determine the amount of investment dollars, and then you divide your price into the investment dollars to get the shares. And you will do that in this cell on Excel. The only last thing I'd like you to do is find the indexes. And we'll talk about this next time. These are the indexes that track the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Index, the S&P 500 Index, and the NASDAQ Index. These are listings of stocks that tell us in relationship to our portfolio, how the overall market is doing. And I want you to find those prices in Yahoo Finance as well. So let's go back to Yahoo Finance. And all you need to do is notice here are the closing prices right here on the front screen, S&P 500, Dow, and NASDAQ. You can click on those, I'll click on the Dow. There's the closing price on Friday. If you do this after the weekend, you can go to historical data, just like you do with your other stocks and find the close of those indexes. These are the indexes that track all stocks in the market. And it's a good indicator and a good thing to know what these are in regards to your investments. When you start investing, or if any of you are in 401ks or retirement funds, they measure the performance of those retirement funds based on these market indicators. It's a good thing to know in personal finance. So that's the portfolio work. So you're gonna be answering the questions in the assignment. And at the same time, you're gonna be also creating a file to keep, keep track of some stocks during the course of the summer term. And I'm trying to keep this as easy as possible. And I know probably uh, Elizabeth and Stella, you're rolling your eyes saying, oh, good God, what do I need to know this for? I'm doing other things in my life. I'm not going to be investing. Well, you are going to be investing. You're going to be investing for retirement. You're going to be investing for the future. You're going to be investing for your families, your children, your family. That's important. And to just get the basics idea of how all this works, I believe is important. And that's why we're doing this. So bear with me as you set it up in this next week. If you have some difficulties with the spreadsheet or doing it, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to guide you. Here's your assignment or work to do this week to study the material and learn the material. Uh, it's questions about banking. It's questions about borrowing, giving examples of loans, giving examples about a budget or planning that you might do. And the stock portfolio is question number four, which we just went over, okay? This portfolio is dated as of Friday, June 11th. And again, I don't wanna make this very complicated. Just pick some companies that you are interested in or maybe might, might wanna work for. I pick my companies because I'm familiar with those companies because I use their products and services. I wanna see how they're doing, how they're running, how they're doing their business. And that's why I selected those, those stocks. So you follow the same pattern, answer these four questions. You can answer them on the Word doc or the PDF doc or in a separate file. Remember, I want a separate spreadsheet file for your portfolio. And then what you do is you then go to your Blackboard. You bring that up. Here's our Blackboard and we go to the Assignments file folder. There you can download the work assignments. Remember I have, these are both the same files are just in different formats. And you click on the file right here. And now you go and upload the work to your completed work to this assignment. And you go right here, attach files, browse. 
then find the file. Once you locate the file on your computer in a file or on your desktop, select it, hit open, and then it'll automatically load so I now can grade it. So you're going to upload two files, the answers to the assignment questions file and your spreadsheet file. Then I will grade them and repost them back to this file folder, and that's how you'll get your grade. All right. Again, this work is due next Saturday, a week from today at midnight. So you have all this next week to do this work and learn it. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. But this is we're going to be doing this every week, every two weeks, excuse me, to review the material. And so this is where you upload your work in the assignment file by clicking on it. And I'm sure in this last year of being in Zoom or being online, you probably all know how to do this anyways. But if you have any concerns about it, any concerns about the questions, be sure to let me know. So that's our class, all right? We're off and running. So Stella, Elizabeth, welcome to Directed Study Personal Money Management. I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to manage it with you. I'm here in Claremont. I'm available 24 hours a day if you need be. So try not to call me at three in the morning though, but I'll be ready if you need me at that time. Again, my name is Rick Hassey. I'm, an, I'm a faculty member in the College of Business I've been a faculty member at Laverne for over 30 years. I was in business for 40 years, owned my own company, an investment banking company, and then uh, retired about four years ago, sold my business to uh, my employees. And now the last four years, I was asked to become a full-time faculty member at Laverne in the College of Business. I teach accounting, I teach finance, I teach statistics. <sighs> And I teach, and I also am a uh, student advisor to the Associated Students of University of Laverne, the governing body of, of Laverne students. I'm a faculty advisor to also to the NCAA for our student athletes. So I'm quite engaged in the university and I'm here to help you and learn personal money management. So welcome, any questions, you know where to find me and I welcome you to our summer directed study. Sorry, we can't be live and in color on campus, but let's make the best of it through these sessions every other Saturday. Thank, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Stella. And uh, I look forward to working with you all this summer. Until two weeks from today, adios. <laughs>